uh, I'm enjoying this so far. Glad you are too. It's a little bit less stress forecasting a full fun game. Um, and it's going well, I think. Really happy with it so far. Let me do a little bit of feedback, uh, of talk about how we started with Argentine Crossroads. I googled this earlier. Casting Code 2. We'll keep on Casting Code 2. So it was a map. This is GameReplays.org for the uninitiated. This is the Code2.org equivalent for Company Heroes 1. So Argentine Crossroads does have a really long history. And this is about its evolution. How it started. So that's its old tack map. How it looked then. Obviously, um, there's no strategic points. There's just uh, tactical points. I don't know what they were called. But they don't have any munitions or fuel. The cutoffs didn't. They were just purely cutoffs. Keep an eye on whether the players are playing. But yeah, it was a very interesting map. It did have a, a tournament um, as cast by Tommy and Fatal. So this is how it looks in Company of Heroes 1. We'll try and zoom in on that a bit, actually. If you can see it better. So you'll notice that this house in the north changed here into that. And it's now kind of changed back again. So this house in the north was a highly dominant house because Vermax start in the north. So it changed from a, 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 a um, short side facing house to a long side facing house. And then it changed, in Company Heroes 2, it changed to a smaller house. But look at the changes there. It put so much effort into making it different. And then they changed the game within like six months ever. It never got into, it never got into auto match play. That's why I'm doing it now. Look, he's got a, he's got a grain elevator there. That's interesting. Farm yard building, he's called it. So he should keep that in if it's a Russian setting now. He's got additional wall openings changed there. And this is him talking about testing for the Wehrmacht base, the bunker positioning. He, by the way, in Company Heroes 2, he wants the bunkers so they can just about fire on the cutoffs just about if you get too close. So that, And if you have line of sight, I think they can just about suppress if you're on the half that is close. Lumberyard, by the way, is now the eastern portion, so we've gone west, centre, east in general and you can see how he's changed that quite a lot he's tried to make it a little bit less shot blocker and sight blocker orientated but a lot of green cover and that's what I prefer I, I, I don't like the large pieces of cover I think they can ruin maps sometimes I like uh, having smaller pieces of cover in my opinion and having a few big shot blockers but too many sh shot blockers and it gets a little bit too allied favoured in my opinion or a little bit too mobile infantry can just smash prepared position play you want a nice balance between mobile infantry and prepared position in my opinion and where are we up to now the church the region saw some heavy modifications and uh, that's pretty much it and then I think it's a oh, southern farm we'll just have a quick look at see how that changed and that's pretty much it um, how are we in general now? Still no start. Oh, there we go. Here we go. We're starting. So I do have two cups of coffee prepped and ready for the finals. What time are we on? It's two o'clock now, so we might be having to have some giveaways whilst we wait for Jezulin to stop eating dinner with his family, which is a very noble thing to be doing, and I don't begrudge him in the slightest. It was a, a, a mix-up on GMT times. Originally, I was thinking 2, v, 2, 2 p.m. for the final, um, but we had a little mix-up, it, but it's absolutely fine. It is flexi-time championships, after all, and that means we have to be flexible. Let's get the overlay changed now. Oh, I'm already in change. Good. Let me update the score. No thrill, th no thrills, no unnecessary uh, additives. Just pure Company of Heroes action on a fantastic map. But I'll just quickly pan around Company of Heroes 2 because I know in your mind's eye you just saw all the pictures of it in Company of Heroes 1. So I just want you to get a feel for how it looks in Company of Heroes 2 now. So that house, by the way, was the one I was talking about at length. That is now North House. Because you've got a large crater there. That's interesting. I like that. That's like from a heavy kind of um, meteor. I'm going to call that meteor crater. And then this is the farm. But look at that giant crane. That's so cool. 
I like that. That is awesome. He's put so much effort into this map. I really hope it gets into water match. Now then, we do have Ostrupen, of course, from Asbag. Now, let me predict his build. Three Ostrupen and two Wehrmacht Mortars. <laughs> We've seen that quite a lot. It's crazy that that's his build, but uh, he has done that quite a lot. MG, of course, is the first unit built from uh, the headquarters. And straight into Ostrup. And Ostrup is going to be very good for taking up these big cutoff points. It does get into the strong house, as I'm calling it. So it's very cool that the Wehrmacht side, the northern side, does not have a strong house near its cutoff. Because in maps like Colodny uh, uh, Firma Summer, the strong house in the west, which is against the Wehrmacht starting section can mean that Wehrmacht are just pushed entirely off the map if they mess up once. Good bit of fire coming in from the MG. It's going to reposition. Ostrupen pushing. Three of them now on the field. I'm saying that he uses three Ostrupen. That's my prediction, having watched him play several times in this tournament. That's lovely, isn't it? Let's see if he's put much work into the outskirts of the map. Because I always like to see that. Not really. <laughs> In the centre, the MG is opening up on a house. Ostrupen moving to go behind this green cover. He is taking the western cut off at the moment, which but there's no territory points for the Soviet player taken quite yet anyway. Has got this conscript now going for the fuel. Decent fire from Ostrup, and they are arguably um, quite powerful, let's say, in the current meta. But I argue that it's more grenadiers that aren't as powerful as they should be, making Ostrup so often used at the moment. In my opinion, anyway. I suppose you need cannon fodder. <laughs> Great uh, piece of mod. We saw this in the first game from Asbag. So he's really showing that he may have scouted this map a little bit. I did see him online in Company of Heroes before the uh, tournament started. So he'd be very upset if he didn't manage to use his practice, perhaps. MG very pressured. So in s he has now gone for a second MG. Three Ostrupen as a Duke into two MGs. Interesting dynamic of play. I expect to see Tier 2 in base. We do indeed see Tier 2 in base with an MG building a Maxim. That's what he'd be expecting. But if he now goes for two mortars after he's gone for the two MGs, um, with the Grenadiers not costing much manpower, much population, or much reinforcement cost, he is able to use a lot more support weapons in Tier 1 than he usually otherwise would. Uh, which is pretty interesting kind of play from Asbag. be interesting to see also if now we see two Soviet wins and then a Wehrmacht win which would indicate that the map is uh, more balanced than you might th that we might think. Well, I think it's balanced anyway. It was just uh, somebody in chat said it wasn't about I think helping and thinks it's allied favoured in his opinion. Maxim coming into the picture. He'll be expecting that. Conscript's getting focused. They are going to be able to retreat. Maxim does make it into the house. So let's keep an eye on uh, Asbag's tier. Oh, he doesn't have tier 1, does he? Of course. So Mortar's probably not the option for him then. Two MGs, three Ostrupen. That's pretty much his build at the moment, and he looks like he might be getting pushed off the map. He does have this low health MG coming into the picture, possibly going to open up against this conscript. Elsewhere, you'll notice that both players have had their fuels for a significant portion of the game. Maxim seemingly just about seeing that Ostrupen. He's going for tier 2. He does have his medic healing bunker. Mine coming down here. Good bit of barbed wire here as well and there. So great play from... Asbag, but the conscripts did manage to get it out. Now you'll notice that these conscripts are going to have to retreat through Hellfire and Brimstone to get home. Unless they know a sneaky way out of this. They go behind the green cover. If... Is that barbed wire connected there? I think so. 
But if they have to retreat, there's going to be a long retreat path all the way around into the centre there. Which is going to take a long time. It's a good mine there. That's going to stop. Uh, I don't know what it's going to stop, actually, because why would the Wehrmacht player want that cutoff at all? Tier 2's now up. He's not quite got enough... Um, he's got enough for a scout car or a half truck at this point. He does not have enough Panzer Grenadiers. He might be using the synergy between the elite troops, Panzer Grenadiers, and the Ostrupen. They do, in fact, have to w run all the way around that cover, but it's not as um, damning as we thought it'd be because this MG was not set up. Nice shot coming in. The 82mm mortars opening up. Ostrupen taking pot shots at this combat engineer. That's going to have to retreat. It will get out of there. Ooh, no, nicely dodged mortar there. He did hear it coming in, and you had to get out of there sharpish for the Soviet player. He does have Molotovs as an option to him. And I think Asbag knows that, hence why he's repacking. Conscript still advancing. Are they in Molotov range? I don't know if he is or not, but he's close to dying. And in fact, if the MG gets a few more bullets in... No, the Pioneer's got the kill at max range with a submachine gun shot. Fantastic from Asbag's Pioneers there. So, Conscript down. He does straight away bring the elite shock troops onto the field, though. Mine hits the Pioneers. I wasn't expecting that to be a mine that we'd definitely see. Ostrupen now advancing on the victory point rather than the fuel. Interesting. Water coming to bear on the MG second MG in the centre, so there's a lot of throttling of the centre by Asbag. He does, of course, have all this barbed wire up still, and uh, Tier 3 is nowhere in sight quite yet, so he's, he's safe to do that at the moment. Indeed, we do now see the Panzer Grenadiers entering onto the battlefield. I'm going to put my radiator on, so I'm bloody freezing. I don't think Asbag's seen this. No way he could have. Didn't even retreat. We also see Ostrupen or Prostrupen, as we should call them, opening up on the Maxims. Or Dead Strupen, after those bloody shots got a handle of them. Panzer Grenadier is advancing. He's not going to have to upgrade to any Panzer Shreks quite yet, regardless of how much f um, fuel munitions he has, sorry. And the reason he does that is to keep the STGs whilst you're facing an infantry army is, of course, beneficial. So why would you... He now gets Tier 1, so he's going to have to get a mortar, it seems. Or a sniper, perhaps, against the shock troopers. Um, what point was I making? I don't know anymore. A Asbag's taken the cutoff. He's just going to white it. He's now going to have to react to the shock troopers moving in because these things have six kills against a full health Ostrupen. 200 manpower extinguished there. Cutoff being reclaimed. A very oddly shaped cutoff. It's almost like a tumorous cutoff. If that was my cutoff, I'd get it checked out at the doctor's. Mortars under STG fights going to have to repack. Will uh, Redbeard react to that? Probably won't have to now it's under the line of sight of the bunker, and that's what White Flash wanted. He wanted the tip of the um, strategic point there to be in line of the bunker. Grenade misses. Good retreat this time. This time. Um, that MG there is going to have to get some repair, uh, health soon. From tier 1, we've yet to see anything. Asbag does have 540 manpower now. He's going to have to spend that soon. He's probably microing and not looking at his taskbar. Or UI, or whatever you want to call it. MG's in a strong position. So this is the Strongest I've seen the Wehrmacht feel in 10 minutes in the game. I really feel like Asbag's got a uh, dominant position. But here comes the T-70. 10 minute T-70. And also we don't have anything from... Yes, the pack is just being queued up just in time. Vet 2 engineer under a bit of peril. He did cut the barbed wire here with this new minesweeper engineer got the smoke out from the shocks. They're going to be able to hopefully soft retreat away from it. No, in fact, they're going to advance on their bellies and try and get a grenade in, but the STGs and the Ostrupen are going to put a stop to that. Conscripts advancing on the centre. 
got a Talamine by Aspag there. Now we've got this Minesweeper who's currently in the west. That could be in jeopardy. It'd be great to see that hit the, um, the T-70. Where's my T-70 at? Here he is. He's gone straight for the, the south. He's going to come to bear against the Panzer Grenadiers, which are going to have to have a hasty retreat because you don't want to lose Panzer Grenadiers. They do cost a lot. Obviously, we've had T-70s acting like snipers so far in this um, this showcase presentation match. Demo being laid. Will he see it? He will indeed see it. He's going to have to cons cancel. Nelly Neal saying, Hans vs. Jezulin is such an epic final. Definitely deserved final spots. I can't decide which one I should root for. Well, it, it is interesting. And normally, if you'd said Jezulin vs. Hans tournament final in Company of Heroes 2 history, um, you would say, oh yeah, Jezulin easily. But that's not the case in this tournament. Jezulin has been a little bit patchy with his tournament play recently. Helping Hans is motivated. Tala kills the T70. Helping Hands is motivated, he's been playing out of his skin, he's looking focused, he's not streaming, he's choosing instead to get as much processing power as he can to reduce latency, for example. Stuff like that um, shows us that Helping Hands is um, really going to push... He's in his first tournament final. His play against his opponents, Von Aston, was absolutely remarkably good. He, didn't, he dodged every single grenade out of about 10 grenades thrown throughout a long... Um, OKW versus USF on Fame and Ville Approach G1 matchup. Like, literally every grenade, every grenade he dodged, it was awesome. Um, so, yeah, he's playing really well at the moment. Uh, it's not somebody you should be messing with or underestimating, in my opinion. Back to this game, however, we've got a cracking decider game between Redbeard and Aspag. You'd argue Aspag, the Wehrmacht player, and we've had two Soviet wins in a row. Got, however, now we've got Pioneers coming through a guard of honour of death. Seemingly escaping with every model intact, which you wouldn't have expected. I was about to say, since we saw the T-70 go down to a tell, we could be seeing our first Wehrmacht win on Argent Town Crossroads presentation match. Or what, what am I calling it? Showpiece match. Here we go, the incendiary artillery on the MG. That's going to force retreat. It's going to allow him to recap his portion of the map, whilst Asbag takes the eastern portion. In the centre, victory points. We've got the MG just about hitting the cone of fire. However, the... The 82mm is going to open up. Here comes the conscripts. One thing that's in Jezulin's favour though is endurance, by the way, Nelly Neal. Jezulin has ultimate endurance having played so much of this game at a high standard recently and for the past two years in total. Infantry coming to bear in the centre. In the east we've got the fuel being taken. In the west, we've still got the, the fuel being taken, so both players have disconnected fuels right now. We've got Panzer Shreks on the Panzer Grandier, so the SDG for the first four minutes of play, and now they're switching to Panzer Shreks. He did always have the fuel, but it was a tactical decision there. The Ostrup and Killing Shock Troopers are now under fire from MG42s. In the centre, we've got marauding units. In terms of overall tech, Redbeard does have a lot of fuel now. It's arguable that he could be saving for his heavy call-in tanks having gone the ever popular um, shock rifle frontline tactics. Right, Account Eliminator, will you upload the finals on YouTube? Absolutely, every game of this will be on YouTube and on a playlist to be posted on KOTU.org, Shoutcast Forum and also Reddit's Company of Heroes fan site. What's this here? Is that a demo? Could we be seeing an excellent demo there? If he sees that, they're dead. We're going to have to keep a bit of an eye on those guys in the corner of our stream. We are losing a sector. Can't be a demo, surely. He would have de detonated it by now. I'm trying to click on what it is. It won't allow me to. The enemy has driven a wedge in our lines. It won't allow me to click on it, it's not a demo. MG in the centre, Ostrupen being pushed away from the east. In the west, you've got Panzergrenadiers in wait. No more armour out from 
Redbeard the Soviet player yet. He's just had his T-70 destroyed by a Teller and he's pretty much keeping it that. A lot of mortar fire being exchanged. The Soviet mortar has been much more successful so far, having been on the battlefield for longer. New mortar from Asbag has done nothing yet, but it is peppering our ears with the sounds of whistling mortar shots. It is indeed a demo. Well said, Zuski. It was a demo all the while. It's just hidden under the barrels. Will we be seeing it demo detonated? Probably not. But it's a shame for Redbeard. That's all I had to do with, by the way, if you want to know this for your casting purposes and when you're watching, is double-click the Soviet player to bring up the demo icon. Didn't quite realise that was the case. Grenade coming in. Oh, great rifle nade! Down to one conscript. We do see the KV-8 now chosen as a... Screw you, I'm sick of losing KV-8. MG42 in position. Shock Troopers now capping the victory point. In terms of overall victory point control, um, it's pretty. there's lots of parity to be said. Vermat does have a slight lead. Conscripts in a pitched engagement against an LMG. Obviously with the KV-8 coming in, they're trying to stay in there for good reason, and this is the reason here. Where's the pack? The pack's nowhere to be seen. The KV-8 has a free run if he wants it. Is he going to go for it? Is this the push he needs? Panzer IV entering onto the battlefield on the wrong side. He's still going for it. He does get the Austrian wipe. 200 manpower extinguished. Can he get the 240 manpower veterancy to LMG Grandier? Probably not. Good reaction there. He's going to full reverse. Is he going to switch to his 45mm just for the sake of it? We don't have any backup, so this KV-8 could be on the field just to kill an Austrian, and that's pretty much it. Nice mortar shot coming in on the Vet 2 Maxim. Still not penetrating the KV-8, just about there. And he is now going to relinquish his push. So he had balls in by Redbeard, but balls out by Asbag. <laughs> Basically, I mean, Asbag, uh, Redbeard pushed hard with his tank, but Asbag was not uh, willing to do that. So a little bit more conservative play from the bag of ass. He has got the stronger position, though, so he's not pushed into doing anything stupid like that. So all in all the time, by the way, it looks like we do see the Panzer Shrek Grenadiers, Panzer Grenadiers get killed by the demo after all. So all that while we were deliberating on whether it was a demo or not, we found out eventually, thanks to Zuski in chat, that it was a demo. And then we also found out that uh, the Panzer Grenadiers did die, I just didn't capture it on camera. But you can imagine when they died, it was when the tanks were trying to kill each other. But the mark of a good caster, you can never catch all the action, but if you can recognise what you've missed, in my opinion, you're doing a pretty okay job. Panzer Grenadier is... Sorry. Uh, Panzer IV coming to bear on the retreating squad there. He is now pushing Sans Panzer Grenadier for the western side of the map. Panzer Grenadier is... Sorry, no. I keep saying Panzer Grenadier. The Panzer IV is now operating with impunity, just roaming around, doing pretty much as it pleases. Victory point captured. In the east, he's taking the fuel. He's taking advantage of having a, the only armour on the field. However, of course, he is lacking overall in terms of um, infantry. He's now bought this Grenadier on the field straight away with an LMG. So although it's veterancy zero, it does have the high DPS option. And he can afford to do that. Just look just how much nice shot off from the Panzer Grenadier. Destroying that wreck, blowing it up. But here we go, we've got a 45mm <laughs> KV-8 doing nothing. What was I on about, by the way? The Soviet player, of course, did have the KV-8 all that while, but it wasn't on the field, at least, if that makes any sense. The only anti-tank armor, let's put it that way. Well, it's a multi-purpose tank, isn't it? Railway cannon is now an option. He does have 300 munitions, so he could be pooling to use that occasionally. And of course he has the... No, he just has that at his disposal from his commander options. Panzer IV moonwalking around there. KV-8's changed to the flamethrower option. It's going to keep the east now. And we've got parity in terms of overall territory points. Again, let's open up the v uh, the FPS lag machine called the TAC map. New pack on the field to deal with the KV-8 threat. KV-8's not uh, any answer to that. In terms of fuel, um, Redbeard has now 184. He is, of course, 
one CP away from having the IS-2. It's on 11, but it's nearly on 12. In fact, you'll see that be on 12. But the next thing that dies, does it all just take the take a thing dying to get it, really? It's that close. Pintle mount on the Panzer IV. Stolen MG42, of course. Now the KV-8's coming into action. He's used the flare to scout for a, the units there, but he's got two Panzer IVs. Where's the second one? The pack does open up on the side armour, or rather the rear armour, as it's known in Coming Heroes 2. Again, hitting the rear armour through the side. And Railway Artillery put in a really central position there. Not quite hitting it. It does hit the, the southern point of the roundabout VP. Main gun destroyed. The second Panzer II four, sorry, will get the kill. It does focus the rear armour, surely. Indeed. So you've now got Red Beard between a rock and a hard place. He's got no armour. He's got three frontline infantry units. Although Asbag, of course, does have that. Interestingly, you'll notice Asbag has a Maxim and Redbeard has an MG42. Now the Panzer IVs can operate with impunity. We do see the pack decrude, but nothing to follow up on it, especially with the LMG and the Flamer. Mortar in turn has been decrued. He is, of course, waiting for the IS-2, and here it comes. So we've got a lot of parity still. In terms of overall fuel, Asbag's already got 80, so he can be working towards getting possibly a Stug 3 or even another Panzer IV. Why change it up if, if it's working for you already? And the IS-2 comes to bear. Does bounce that shot. It was technically, I suppose, bounceable shot for the IS-2. I think lots bounce off the IS-2, in fact. Such thick armour. Pack coming into position. Towards the IS-2 threat. Uh, in terms of overall victory point control, we are in for a long one on this game. In terms of time, we're 20 minutes past two, so this is working out really well. Rear armor shot from the IS-2. Pack comes wailing onto the IS-2. Panzer IV also, taking the IS-2 down to half health. The other pack goes to diminish the shock threat, and the LMG will set up watching over its retreat path. Really high standard of play in this game. I'm really enjoying it. It's a cracking series to get us into this thing. Just going to take a second to look at something. Hopefully we'll be getting Stormless in as a co-caster. It is his birthday, so he is out doing things on his birthday which is what you'd expect, but it would be nice to get somebody in with me, I think. Two voices are better than one. Three boy voices spoil the broth, though. <laughs> now then, in terms of fuel, he has now indeed gone for a third Panzer IV, so this IS-2 is going to have a lot of work to do. He has, however, started to build a Zis gun, so it is going to... He has built the thing he requires to maintain some level of parity from an anti-armor perspective. Tier 3 in base. He's changed that Panzer IV to a Stug 3. That is a really good choice, and I'm glad he's done that. In fact, he'll be able to have an Oshvind as well if he's not if he's good. Nice full range pack shot on the IS-2. Does get a rear arm penetration from max range. The IS-2 knows where it is though now. Great shot in on the Panzer IV. It is going to be able to get out of there. There wasn't much in by way of um, back up, i.e. the Zisk gun, which is still rocking onto the field very slowly. Ice 2's going to get fausted, surely. Tore it very slowly traversing. You don't want to be that grenadier right now. Only gets one kill. In the centre, we've got incendiary artillery on the Vet 3. MG wiping a good bit of veterancy there. Here comes the Stug 3. This thing is an utter beast at penetrating armour. 
which is really, really apt, I think, because especially on the Eastern Front, the Stug started out as an assault gun, but became probably the pound-for-pound pound best tank destroyer of the war. I, I say pound-for-pound pound because, in general, it was uh, so well operated by the German crews, and on the, the long expanses of the, what is it called, the bloody, like, the Caucasus, on the Caucasus, the, uh, the step of the Caucasus, there's so much expanse of range that these Stug 3s really came into their own. And that's it for your Imperial Dane-esque um, historical context. I really like Stugs. Panzer 4 comes in, it's got it's just heavy skirts, it is going to be able to put some heavy fire on the ice too, especially if it gets into the rear armour of it. The Zis is nowhere to be found. The uh, Stug 3 is getting some decent shots in as well, but of course, Railway Artillery wipes the Zis! All the while, the IS-2 is now reversing into base solemnly. And also, you've got these infantry squads that could be wiped by the Panzers if they so wanted to, if the IS-2 gets out of there. IS-2 is now going to have to come back into the picture. So the Stug 3 is watching up. What's the IS-2 doing? No IS-2! No! You're going to die! Main gun destroyed! Stug 3 could get the killing blow, especially now this shot block has gone. The Flames will try and stop it. He has got two um, combat engineers, one of which is Veteran C3. Could we be seeing Asbag, despite the odds and despite Redbeard seemingly being a little bit more, a little bit stronger in the, I think, the game that he won out of the two start first games? And the four gets a nice shot off on the repairing Vet 3 combat engineers. He cannot afford to lose them. And he does have enough for another railway artillery, should he want it. All the while, you've got the comp <laughs> these shock troopers annihilating squads in the distance. So if he keeps his IS-2 alive, he could put some... Oh my god, but here comes the railway artillery. He's going to have to get out of there. He's going to have to get out of there. Oh! Oh dear god! Ultimate wipage, and he's just about managing to repair his IS-2 with a Vet Zero combat engineer with three men, and you got this shock trooper still killing troops. So these things are up to 24 kills. What a game! Oh, combat! Oh god! Did it. I love the rail artillery because it, you know, drops your frame rate by 10 for every shot. It's so fun. Such a good feature that is. What a fun game, what a fun series we've had. I'm really thankful to the players for this. This will make uh, I, I, You can kind of call Aspag the de facto uh, third place player now that Von Aston didn't show up. So he, he kind of won that. And now it looks like he's winning the showpiece Argentine Crossroads game. Still, this Panzer IV. 37 kills, that says. I can never read those that numbers. They're so small. And well, he's he's just about kept his fuel. He's just about kept his victory points for now. This t t um, munitions point here, and this cutoff point here. Panzer's opening up on the conscripts, trying to get out of the castle. And the IS-2's uh, now got its main gun back, so it's it's back in the game. We've got the Vet two shock troopers. Does not want to advance them. He needs those things alive. What is he doing? Shock troopers, no! No! Redbeard! Showing a lot of... And he loses his conscript as well. Dude, Redbeard, what were you doing, man? That is what is known as... Yep, yeah, GG. <laughs> well, I think he actually knew that it's just gone 2.30 and we should be getting the final on now. So he decided to um, suddenly become very tired and lose his only things he had going for him. But what a fantastic series, really happy to see that. Uh, that was awesome. He may have just fallen asleep, Francis5795. That is a highly possible option. And I think we'll just keep the... Um, let's do a task for. So I'm just going to make a coffee really quick. But yeah, that was that was cool. I'll just quickly update the 
score as well. Just because it's not a tournament game, I don't get to change the brackets now. But Asbag, GG. Let me see if Jezulin's online yet. 